We lost the die roll, so I'm going to be on the draw this turn. And unfortunately, I think we got a mulligan here. Uh, since we don't have any of our black sources, and our hand does nothing. So, luckily on the draw, we won't be too far behind. Ooh, this is horrible as well. What a great way to start a draft. Down to five. Well, I guess we're keeping it, even though there's not a lot to do. If my opponent... I mean, it's better than going down to four, so hopefully we just draw some lands. We have some stuff to do eventually. But this is a slower format, so it doesn't overly punish you. Yay! There's a land. It's one of our colors. That's not a plains. Woohoo! So we might be getting there. We just might be getting there. Ooh, okay. Generally, when you see these kinds of colors, it could be a four to five color deck. It's not great for us since we don't have a fast start, but we do have our third land. So we get to start putting things on the ground. And Smite should be good against this kind of deck, if that's what my opponent is doing. My opponent already has card advantage on my, my moles, so not scary. Morph? Of course it's a morph. Why wouldn't it be a morph? Do I want to be trading off this early? I think I have to, right? Mm, but then I drew a rush of battle. Yeah, I'm going to uh, offer a block here with it. So I'm going to play the Sage Eye Harrier instead of the Watcher of the Roost. Because uh, I'd rather have the Watcher later because there's more in the air. It gains me a little bit of life, too. Could be wrong since now I have the rush of battle in. Oh gosh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Hello, Soren. What's up, buddy boy? Ouch. Yeah, so that's happening. Opponent doesn't attack him with a morph. I do have my fourth duder here. How do I kill this guy? So next turn my punch is gonna get a bunch of life but can't really attack through majorly? I'll have my watcher up but that'll just get blocked and eaten because I assume the vampire stays back. Well, best bet is to try to surprise my opponent with the morph. And I still think we go ahead and um, attack. Which is, I should have thought out beforehand. Because uh, I should have kept my mana up, but such is my life. Assume there's a block here with maybe this morph? I don't know. Okay. So I might be able to uh, kill Soren next turn. Because I can reveal this and rush a battle. <laughs> that's so bad. But that's what happens with Planeswalkers. They eat like three or four cards. Come on, let's survive Soren. End of turn, I will be flipping or revealing something. Is this a removal spell? Please don't be a removal spell. Probably the removal spell. No, another morph. Yay. So I do get to kill Soren. That's good. I get a lot of damage the following turn, but I get to remove Soren. Yes, I'm going to take a lot of damage. That is definitely happening. Unless my opponent plays really conservatively. You want to swing in? If I remove a spell, and I'm in black and white, great removal spells, then uh, I get to kill Soren. Yeah, my opponent doesn't do it. Love that. We're going to show the rush of battle. To make sure that my opponent knows that uh, it's dying next turn. Not excited that I have to blow the rush, but I mean I'm I'm going to, no doubt in my mind. Soren's dead! Yay! And it only took two cards and a really 
bad board state to get there while already low on cards. We'll play the Blood Flies next turn. Might eventually get somewhere with that. Another more for my opponent. Play the Blood Flies, keep our Watcher of the Roost back to block. If my opponent gets the fifth land out, then I'm pretty much screwed. There's nothing I can do, so let's just F6. There's nothing for one. Ooh, we get a life. That's good, question mark? I'm still going to play it. Because it's a gain of life, untapped land. Do I attack in with the Watcher? Am I blocking next? If I put it missing another land drop, then I'm blocking. So. And I guess if Force does come to worst, I block. At least I get a 3 3. That seems horrible. But. Let's see what my opponent ends up doing. Could have been right to attack there, but I think I need blockers on this board state. Mm, okay. I'm not going to block because this could easily be 4-4 four, four Life Thinkers or 3-4 Flyers. And I'm definitely going to keep up Smite the Monstrous. Hopefully that'll take something good. Let's see what my opponent does. I don't think the two points of damage is worth the last turn. So this is a flip. Please be an Abzan Guide. I know it's bad because of life gain, but at least I can deal with it to Smite the Monstrous. Versus... Uh, yeah, the Abomination. Smite ain't so grand against. Now my opponent gets to filter through. Ouchie, ouchie. I've been putting up a good fight versus Soren. And a really bad Mulligan. While I'm attacking, I'm going to get a creature in my opponent's hand. Three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, I just keep attacking. Is that all that's happening? If I'm not blocking, yeah, I'm not blocking, ever. I shouldn't say ever. As of right now. <laughs> keep up, smite. Might be able to take out a powerful morph if that's there. Probably just gonna take seven though, and then be ready to die soon. What did my opponent discard? I didn't even see. Ooh, Highland game. It's a waste of life. Please have an Abzan guide. Dang it, you don't. Not too sure I've ever uttered that before. Actually wanting my opponent to have a 4-4 four, four lifelinker. Marty Skullhunter and the... What do you call it? It's going to start putting in front of unmoved morphs. Hopefully the swarm will get us big enough. But, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of disheartened about this particular game. Like, some of the stuff that gets us... Oh, no! Why would you do that? Mmm, dumber. There goes my blood form. Swishy, wishy, wishy. Another something? Keru Bloodseeker. Oh, so I'm gonna die. Is there anything... I mean, my opponent's attacking in. I'll just go in and concede. I like to play it out normally, but the wind's on the board, and I'm conscious in this format of time always, even though I'm currently ahead, uh, playing slow and whatnot. Okay, so Soren, huh? How about that shizzle? I guess flyers are good, but not super great against Soren, uh, since Soren makes flyers. Molting snakeskin to power through? I feel like my deck's pretty much as set up as it could be. We are going to be on play. We are going to want to be aggressive. We didn't see any target for Smite the Monstrous, though. 
assuming in those colors that's happening. It looks like my opponent was doing the whole uh, Salt Eye Splash for Soren thing. Maybe just bring in the Despise. It'll get something, and it'll possibly get Soren. So, yeah, I think we'll do that instead. I don't think it's normally great to just bring in a a hate card against... Uh, this is kind of bummery, but we have our colors, and we have things to do, so we'll keep it. I think, like, if all that... If Despise only got Planeswalkers, I wouldn't be playing it, because it's just so not guaranteed that's going to hit anything relevant. But it'll, at some point, if I were to draw, it would get a creature or something, so. My point is, like, you don't bring in a naturalize just to uh, have, you know, to take out one, like, ghost fire blade or something, because the chances of you having your one answer to their one powerful whatever, just, you know, more likely than not, they're not going to draw it, or you're not going to have it when it's needed, so. Play our Windscarred Crag. We have all of our red sources now, so that's fine, but not really a big deal anyway. Considering we just need gas now, like a butcher of the horde. My opponent now is playing red last turn, so that's news. News to my opponent. Look at all that news going on. Murderous cut. Yay! Things to do. Powerful things to do, no less. I mean, not, not my morph. I mean, my murderous cut later. We have two really nice, powerful spells. Don't have a lot of things to be doing pressure-wise, but we'll draw into some more action, right? There's a morph. Might just feed a resistance, but it, uh, it gains, oh, it's got to be a color it gains protection from. So it's not going to do a whole lot. Gosh, do I want to trade off morphs? The only morph I saw from my opponent was way better than mine. Let's attack. I think I can sneak in two damage here. If my opponent wants to do the trade, I'll just go ahead and do a flip and have my flyer, which I'm going to do anyway. It just, you know. I think my opponent won't block. At least it'll give me a sense of how good this morph is. The only thing I'm losing here is a blocker. And I don't really mind. I mean, we're basically trading life. What I mean by all I'm losing here is a blocker is if I don't attack and don't get the damage in, then, you know, I have a blocker back hanging out. If I attack, I might be able to sneak two damage in, so that's a win for me. Or if my opponent ends up blocking and I just morph, I'm using the mana how I would, less surprise factor, but whatever. Um, and uh, my opponent doesn't take damage, which is basically the same thing if I hold my morph guy back, if I wasn't even attacking. Uh, but I get to kind of learn a little bit about my opponent's morph, as well as uh, see uh, see if, that, if my opponent's morph is worth anything. My opponent does not care about the morph there. I'll do a flip. Pass the turn. That's all I got. That's all I got. Next turn will be at 5 mana if the Sage I Harrier goes down. Bummer, but I can play the Scavenger. I have a Murderous Cut for something nasty, like a Soren, which currently can't be cast, which is good. Ooh, hello Mystic. That might take a Murderous Cut. Maybe not right away, but i definitely lose that race. We'll keep it around. The uh, murder's cut for now. Try to get two for one out of it. Always a good thing. Scoured Barons. Well, we're not going to play it because I do want to have murder's cut available. I'll just ping away for one. At least I have mana, so that's nice. I can do things as I draw them, as long as there's not too many lands. Losing the race heavily, but again, I'm gonna hang on to the cut for a while. Next turn, we get the Sultai Scavenger and turn the race a little bit around.
opponent's stuck on only two colors at the moment. I wish my deck uh, had a little more action so that I could be abusing that. Another morph here. Do I just use up my mana to take out the morph? No, I'm going to be greedy. I think I, I need to be... Ooh, I'm glad I was greedy. Um, we'll take out the guy we know is bad. Leave up our feeder resistance. And hang on to our sage our hair since we're a little bit behind. We'll keep it on the blocks. And the feet should be able to protect anything that flips. Yay! Alright, let's remove full spell it up. We don't have a second black source, so we're just going to gain some life. Again, keep feet up, and then uh, we'll be able to Sultai and all these other things later. Actually, next turn we'll have Sultai Scavenger and Feet Resistance up, which is really fantastic. All right, in these colors, there's none of the really crazy scary morphs. Um, it could... Oh, what's the... Uh, it's the 4-5, actually. But if that happens, my guy stays alive, so I don't mind. Uh, there's the blue 4-5. It could be the Death Touch, dude. If that's the case, I mean, I trade the feet for it, but... And it is. Um, and it's going to take something out anyway, and I have other stuff, and I want to fill up the graveyard. I'll use my feet resistance. It gives me a 2-5 flyer anyway. And my opponent revealed Death Frenzy. Good to know. Not going to do anything particularly fantastic for me here, but that's fine. I want to be protection from black, please. That would be fantastic for me. All right. What else you got, buddy boy? Another morph. Do I play the scavenger this turn? Doesn't die to a death frenzy, which is nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can't do all of it. Yeah, we'll just attack. Play our Sultai scavenger. Save murder's cut for another day. Start getting our bird warriors online. Oh? Oh, a monastery flock. That's fine. Not excited for that, but also not the end of the world. It does let my opponent draw into, uh, or start getting the mana that's needed out, but such is the life. Go evasion! We can do it with evasion! Is there anything for these colors that matter? No. Well, my opponent did find green, but it means Death Frenzy is going to be really bad for my opponent. This makes Death Frenzy really good. So what we're going to look to do is try to have the Pony Record Gate be our only 2-2 on the board. Because instead of just casting it now, we want to be able to have it as well as um, two, three, and maybe like draw into one of our anthems end of turn flip so that my opponent doesn't have a chance to sorcerize it up. For now, we'll attack with our flyers, train two for two. Maybe I don't want to do that. I do want to be pressuring my opponent. Oh, my opponent's going for the appropriate block, as should happen. I was saying two for two, because the Highland Games will come in. But we get to develop our board, too. It means there's less blockers, so then we, we start doing a little bit more damage later on. And having our mirrors cut available means we can take care of something super scary. We're trying to turn this around. I 
Another Highland game. All right. It's not fantastic. If I can do the flip now, I still get some good attacks in, but I don't have the Anthem yet, so I'd rather just wait. The thing is, the pointing back brigade is so good against the games, even though there is a death frenzy in hand. Uh, we'll still attack with everything, probably unmorph it uh, when my opponent attacks in with both. That'll be nice. And if my opponent wants to block here and here, we'll do that. If my opponent wants to death frenzy before combat, it still clears his stuff out. And we have our guys online. My opponent does gain the life, but we're, we're getting the board state locked up right now. Worried about all the cards in hand my opponent has. I'm going to uh, not play my planes. I'm trying to think if there's a reason why. Discard or something, but any of the discards that happen, the planes is going anyway. And we'll just leave it up. It's only because I can cast uh, I can cast Murder's Cut anyway, so there's no need to play the planes. I got plenty of mana, so this could be a death frenzy, which would be fine. Highland game goes away. Sure, the goblins are gone. Archer's parrot pit. Whatever. Prince getting life. We still have the flyers to keep bashing through. Another planes. I shall now attack with my flyers. Whittle away at two points of damage. Turn. <laughs> I mean, it could be right to have like taken out this monastery already with the murderous cut. I'm gonna wait till I have something else powerful in my hand because uh, right now I don't have a way to deal with some other bomb. I mean, if Soren gets played, then like immediately I'm killing like a flyer and attacking in. Another parapet? It's going to be hard to anthem through all of that. My opponent will be able to start hitting me for two a turn as well. So there are targets for this murder's cut. Ooh. Do you have something relevant? Have you been holding on to Soren forever? Nope. So you got a forest and a death frenzy. Got it. I'll make a note. I already knew about the death frenzy. That means you are out of gas, friendo. So I do hang on to the murderous cut for future, I think. Until I get my next... Uh... Yeah, I still, I still want to hang on to the murderous cut. I'm behind. My opponent's going to be able to start doing some damage as well. But this is my insurance against like some bomb. And I should be able to start drawing something relevant soon. Here I take one down to 11. I'm really behind on the race because my opponent can do two, which I'm doing, and my opponent can gain two life whenever he or she feels like it. That's why I despise can definitely suck. What did I pull out for despise? The smite? Yeah, the smite's could have done nothing this game. Um, because you draw it late in the game, you know, there's nothing to do. But it's definitely worth playing there. I got nothing else to do. My opponents, you know, could easily have been stuck with Soren waiting for a planes. And it would pretty much just be playing anything anyway. Forest has been played. Death Frenzy plus something else in hand. What you doing, friendo? What is your game plan over there? I might be forced to use the Murder's Cut if my opponent has a removal spell for my Sultai Scavenger. All right, there goes the Death Frenzy. Opponent gains tons of life.
I'll wait and see what I draw before I murderous cut the monastery flock. But with this much life now, I really need to make sure that uh, I'm doing, you know, five versus my opponent's two each turn. So that's going to be kind of relevant. Get it. Get all that life. All right, what else I got? Ooh, swarm of blood flies. That would have been actually not that great last turn because it would have also died to it. But that does mean I get to put some pressure on my opponent. So let's do some math here. Next turn we're doing four. We'll do two turns. We're kind of just about there. I can still do the murders cut when I need to. Yeah. In case my opponent has a removal spell, I guess we'll play this guy first. Just in case something goes down. It also means my opponent has to have four mana up each turn, but my opponent being at nine mana means that's probably going to be able to happen. <laughs> My dream right now would be for my opponent to play some sort of relevant threat that I murderous cut and then uh, be able to start attacking him for five. But I, I'm, I'm going to fire off the murderous cut this turn no matter what um, at the end of my opponent's step because these guys are going to kill me in a couple turns and I can't, I can't have that. And my opponent continues to gain life, which means I'm, yeah. I just have to trust that I draw something else more relevant. Can my opponent kill me right away? Am I just trying to save time, maybe, in case my opponent loses? Could be. Can't believe I'm murderous cutting a monastery flock. But things get to get pretty nutty at that point, so... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Trumpet Blast. Can I kill my opponent? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. No, I cannot. So I'm just attacking with everything. It is a two-turn clock at this point. Which my opponent does not have me on. If one of my guys go down though, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ooh, it's gonna get really tight. So my opponent, my opponent has a thing. Is it a flyer? Is it Soren? Sultai Soothsayer is good for my opponent being able to draw into something fantastic. If it's Soren. My opponent won't be able to cast Soren and activate, which is okay. It buys me kind of a turn, but Soren, I mean, activate the parapets. But Soren can come down, put a flyer on the table. I attack Soren with two of my dudes, flyer blocks one. I need to do some damage to my opponent, but still going to be pretty tight. And then the Trumpet Blast doesn't do the lethality that it needs to. And I take two, three, four. Oh man, that could be tight. But I do have other other cards to draw, so there's a timer to Kumar. Bondkin's gone. What am I putting at? Ooh, Witness, Kumar. Good cards. Yeah, so no flyers, though. So maybe a removal spell or a flyer was drawn, or it is a Soren type thing. Ooh, probably a Sultai Scavenger of my opponent's own. Ooh, if this is Dead Drop, no, don't do it. Don't do Dead Drop. Ooh, that's okay. So I think we win. Yeah, because what my opponent was trying to do is line up a win next turn with uh, five attacking power plus these guys being able to finish off a game. Because this can be four damage here, and then uh, this guy's lethal on his own. I'm going to have to bet on that and then trust that the Trumpet Blast actually gets there. All right, please don't have anything else with your one card in hand. Because if that's it, we've got the win. 
and we still have another game to play. If I get there. Ooh, something else? Or are you just saving time? No, Soren! No! <laughs> okay. Uh, can I win? Is this even possible? So you're putting a 2 2 black dude out with flying. You block here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I need to draw my other anthems. That's not one of my other anthems. So, um, if I attack with everything, again, blocks here, opponent goes down to 9, then there's tons of lifelink, so I can never let Soren get pumped up with lifelink if I want to try to win, which means these guys both attack Soren. No, no, uh, Sage right here and Sultai Scavenger both attack Soren, killing Soren. I attack... Do I keep my dude back for blocks against this one? Because this is three, four, five. Next turn, I'm down to two, so I need to block the Sultai Scavenger. That means I have to attack someone with both of my guys, try to... Uh, I will save my uh, Trumpet Blast. Swarm Bloodflies gets bigger, so that's nice. Attack Soren. Attack Soren. I'm attacking with um, the Swarm. Oh, no, no, no. I want to attack with the Sultai Scavenger because I want to keep the Swarm back for more block action. It's going to be bigger, so it's going to be harder to kill. Yep, that's what's happening. Opponent can only block one isn't blocking one. Oh, I see, I see. I didn't think that through, but it doesn't really change. Uh, I think I had to do that same attack in order to uh, see if my opponent makes a mistake, but I couldn't have kept both guys back because then my opponent could have just blocked the one, so I'm within a lifelink, then I still would have lost. Here, though, my opponent can attack with everything. Three, four, five, six, seven, I'm dead. Does my opponent do it? I assume my opponent does it. No! All right, there's hope. Not much though, because I still, my opponent still has a block, or still has an attack there. Um, or when I attack, has a block, and I still don't have lethal yet. But I can draw another anthem. Yes, so good. I think we just draw the win. Obviously we attack with everything. Try to get some of our life online. Opponent has to block. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. <sighs> if my opponent has something, that'd be really sad. Just barely got there. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, we, we had two outs, and we got there. Nice top decks on both sides of the, of the game. Now this match gets to go on to the next round. I'm going to be on the draw, though, which I'm not stoked for. I still don't think we're bringing in anything from our sideboard. We still haven't seen anything great for Smite the Monstrous. Uh, my opponent doesn't have a lot of power, has just a bunch of toughness, which is appropriate for uh, my opponent's game plan. Is there a reason for the Krumar to come in, or the Swiftwing? I don't think so over these guys. We still want those evasion pieces on. Despise, I think, is still okay to have over one of those two, as, over the Smite as well. Uh, keep it the same way. Long match. Opponent of... One, two, three, four. We don't have our red, but we have plays. We'll get the red when we need it. I'm really worried about the uh, death frenzy. Is that what it's called? The uh, minus two, minus two, all creatures. But we might be able to pound out a fairly quick win if we do turn three, turn four, and draw a, um, a trumpet blast early. Tag with just a bunch of beef. Well, we need it on turn 6 is when, when we're looking for it. Feed Resistance is nice. Nothing to play yet. My opponent tends to have a, some morphs. 
So I might play the Harrier first over the Ponyback Brigade, but the thing is right now I don't have red anyway. So I might not even care about the Ponyback Brigade. It could, I may not even draw red, and having two red spells means it's going to be a while before I get to play both. So yeah, I think we'll play the Ponyback Brigade and offer the trade, sadly, but... Or rather, accept the trade. Because the Harrier with flying might be more relevant than the Ponyback Brigade. And Death Frenzy does get the this guy at some point. If I had red in hand, I would probably try to trade off with the Sage Eye Harrier instead. But at this point, I'm considering Pirate Grade just a 2 2 for 3. That's it. That's what I was mentioning earlier in the draft how you kind of have to, like, how I've been learning that to be more successful in this format, there needs to be way less uh, emphasis on the, the best case scenario with these guys here. We're going to trade. That's it. Then we'll have an unyielding Krumar um, against my opponent next turn, which would be nice. What did my opponent have? Mystic of the Hidden Way? Yeah, that's great. Because uh, we don't have great ways to deal with that. All right, another morph. Still gonna go ahead and maximize my uh, my mana and do a yielding Krumar here. If my opponent rocks into the fifth land, probably won't block the morph. Our damage race will be the same if it becomes the other uh, three fire flyer. I'd rather just wait and save like have a feed of resistance up next turn after I've put down a Sage Eye Harrier to protect my babies. Sandstep Citadel is being played, but there's a little bit of lag. I know this because the chat tells me it's Sandstep Citadel, but I'm just hanging out, waiting for that to actually happen. There it is. Ooh, and it's a foil one. Ooh, and we have our mountain online. All right, so we're attacking in for sure. If my opponent wants to double block, we can feed a resistance and a first strike. Yeah, let's do that. My opponent, for one blue, can't have anything super relevant. There's the monastery flock going for the block. Not surprising. So, do I just want to pay 5 to get my 1-5 online? Yeah, I do. I want flyers. I want all the flyers. It can block the morph pretty well. We've only seen things that the Sage Eye Hair can block no matter what. Scared of Soren. But we can get like a feed online and kill Soren if that stupid... Gosh! Soren! All games! How do I kill Soren right now? Opponent has tons of blockers online. Take up arms will be good with the trumpet blast, which means I really don't want to have to use the trumpet blast to kill Soren right now. So what do I do? The feeder resistance only protects my guy against. There's two flyers here, so I don't know which one my opponent's going to use to block the Sage Eye Harrier. Uh, both will be able to get through, or both will be able to kill Soren if it actually gets through, right? If I attack with both, I would imagine the Vampire going from the Sage Eye Harrier and the Unyielding Krumar getting blocked by the Monastery Flock. If I put Protection from Black on the Sage Eye Harrier, then the Flock has to go there and at least the Unyielding Krumar can kill something, but it can just be blocked by the morph, then the flyer sticks around. Ugh. So maybe what I have to do is accept the fact that I can't kill Soren this turn. And then there's going to be a plus one activation, I assume. And then there's going to be a bunch of lifelink. And then I'm going to have to like go late. But if I play the take up arms into uh, like the trumpet blast, then I'll have three, four, five creatures. And my opponent will have up to four. And at least one of them will be able to kill uh, Soren, which really sucks that I have to do that. But I don't really lose my board state. I get to keep feet of resistance and all that available. So 
I'm going to pass the turn. I'm not blocking with Unyielding Krumar, so I might as well attack and see if my opponent uh, gets a little sloppy. This also means my opponent might feel comfortable putting uh, the flock in front of the Unyielding Krumar next turn as well, which means Trumpet Blast will kill it, so that would be just ideal. Another Monastery flock. Alright, please only have one creature here. I assume the guy's going to go up to three, so lifelink happens. I can't imagine you would just get rid of your Soren to have two vampires that are flying. Even though that's great defense against what's going on in the game right now. Yep. Huh. So some of my warriors go away. Oh, if this is a counterspell, I just lose, by the way. I don't think I can play around it, but have to. Have to have to try this to get rid of Soren now. Hmm. Trumpet Blast. Should kill Soren. I also lose a couple warriors along the way. But Soren should die. I say should. Please die, Soren. Please, please, please die. It's a bummer I can't play the Saddle Brute after playing the Trumpet Blast. But if all goes somewhat well, I might be able to attack next turn. <laughs> we'll see. Yay, please do that. Please put that guy right there. Die, Soren, die. These guys die. My opponent uh, doesn't kill any of my warriors, so that's kind of cool. And the lifelink one point doesn't matter for me to like not have feeder resistance up. Okay, so we have a really great board state. Gonna go ahead and cast my Harrier. Actually, no, because my opponent could have the Death Frenzy. We'll just pass the turn here. Uh, I wouldn't normally play Sage Harrier, but I keep feet up right now because my opponent has the Death Frenzy. Uh, that's another guy that just dies to it. So if the Warriors go away, then whatever. Nope. Please be dead drop. It's not going to be, but that'd be great. It's going to be the, uh, yeah, Shambling Attendants. We'll be able to kill that soon enough. May not even care since we'll be able to attack in the air a little bit. Um, we'll have our Bellwing Saddle Brute to put a Feeder Resistance on the Brute and then get there. Another Take Up Arms is good. Um, I still think we just add beef to the board. While we can. Because I get to keep the feet up still. Could be right just to put the evasion on. Because what we're trying to do now is draw to our second Trumpet Blast or our other, um, <laughs> the White Anthem. But I think I have time to wait on the Take Up Arms. And again, I'm just a little worried about the uh, Death Frenzy. So I'd rather do that later. And putting this much pressure on my opponent means there's no way the Shamley Attendance is attacking in. So we're okay. We're just going to develop the board more. We're also in a good position on time. My opponent's down to two life. Um, as a secondary win condition, it might be hard for my opponent to... Uh, looks like my opponent built the deck around kind of like the Soren bombs, and the rest of the deck's pretty lame. So killing me in two minutes could be kind of hard, actually. All right. If I go for the block and have protection from black, 
I like it, but my opponent's not tapped out. I think right now I just save the feet of resistance because uh, I have more pressure against my opponent this way. Perhaps what we're seeing here is the Death Frenzy, but even then that doesn't do great things against my opponent. I'm wondering what else my opponent has for blocking here. Because this allows me to attack in with more stuff. Ooh, a Savage Punch? That's not going to go very well, friend. Yay, two for ones! Love it, love it. So that's really going to swing the game around now. Um, and we're attacking with everything. And I'm going to play the Sage Eye Harrier. Again, this is a Death Frenzy play around. I want to save the Take Up Arms for an end step after I have an Anthem. Just a regular cast, please. What a long game. <laughs> I am F6, debility and injury on my Krumar. How interesting. Is this a death frenzy now to get rid of some of these guys? I don't know. Still attacking with everything. Let me just draw some more lands. See what else my opponent just might have. Blocking the 1-1. One, one. Opponent doesn't want to worry about the 5 damage right now. 30 seconds. I think we're in a good enough position. Hopefully we can try to kill my opponent before then anyway, so we have a more legitimate win. I've definitely lost in this format quite a bit to timing out. More in the beginning. I haven't timed out in a while, but being a slow player and all the different clicking and stuff, it took a little bit of adjusting to with all the decisions and the colors and whatnot, so I'm pretty sympathetic to that. My opponent gets a thing that... No, oh, opponent's going down at the time. Alright, and the Death Frenzy goes. Which is okay. And that's that. So, I think we were still going to get there. What was our next card? My opponent would have gained a bit of life. How come I can't draw my cards? I don't know. By the way, this... <laughs> it's too long. Let's go to round two.